were on an Ozfest once with System of a Down headlining, I believe. And uh, I remember even at the time, you guys joking about what a mistake it was for you guys to be on there. <laughs> Uh, and I want to explain why it's because these bands on the second stage, you have to pay a promotional fee to be on the tour. Like you pay for them to promote you being on Ozfest. And it's like, uh, it was like 40 grand or whatever. And that money comes out of your pocket. Like literally your band would have to earn that 40 grand or whatever it is back for the label before you would see any royalties. I'm assuming you've never yes. seen any red cord royalties. I'll tell you this. We do get once a quarter, uh, the royalty statement and, um, uh, there's a big, uh, minus in front of what we've made. And honestly, I don't think they're ever going to uh, pay Sharon Orsborn the money that she is owed. <laughs> yeah. I remember getting, I remember getting the call. Um, and believe me, as a kid, I loved going to, to Oz fests and festivals and it was cool cause you were there for the day. And you, when you're on, Ozfest, you're at an Ozfest for two months, so it's a little bit different. But I remember a guy was so psyched when he got the news. He called us all up. He called me up, and he's like, "What does it feel like to be a band on Ozfest?" And I was just like, "I think this is a bad idea." And he was like, really bummed out because <laughs> <laughs> he was giving us, you know, great news. But but you know, needless to say, we we were on that tour with a lot of uh, really good friends, and it was a ton of fun to hang out on, and you know. We we are ourselves, so you know we'd get in trouble every now and again. Uh, some bands don't joke or can't joke, and we do constantly. So we had, we had some run-ins with people, but other than that, it was smooth sailing. Um, I think, uh, and a lot of those. It's funny because what we all started worrying some of the people in the band that were excited about going on the tour. A couple of us were getting them very worried because I was picking like planning outfits to wear on stage. I came up with the idea of we should all go out as the David Draymond's <laughs> and where we all get like snake bite piercings. <laughs> and we just, for our whatever 20 minute set or whatever, we just walk around the stage, no instruments and just go, I'm David Draymond. I'm David Draymond <laughs> and see how long it would take to get kicked off. Um, <laughs> but we did none of that. <laughs> So Disturbed was also on this. I forgot about that. They were the co-headliners. Yes, they were. They were. They were the co-headliners. And it was, I'm not going to lie, it was fun watching them because they, the way he speaks to an audience is unbelievable. It's, I mean, he says the same thing every single night. Do you remember any of it? The city. Uh, my favorite was, let me see your motherfucking fists in the air. And then everyone would go, <laughs> ape shit like to oh. me going going into the the tour with disturbed specifically i was just like i don't want to fucking tour with those guys that band sh whatever they suck right and then i have to say because i'm a huge asshole um <laughs> their bass player uh was sponsored by the same uh company that i was and the the person like the public relations person would call me and be like oh you get to hang out with john i was like yeah i don't give a shit who cares this dude's in disturbed and so I got on this, I got, I think I got married. I think I got married. Uh, no, I definitely got married. And the guy, I was on my honeymoon when the guys had to drive to California to start OzFest. So I flew and met up with them later on. Was that that tour? I don't know, either way. But we were eating at catering and fucking don't, you know, John from Disturbed, here I am thinking, fuck those guys. He comes over to me and was like, hey, you're Greg, right? The nicest, sweetest guy in the world. Aww. And that's, that is the moment where I was like, dude, I have to actually stop being a prick. We're all, no matter what you play and what you do and how you're perceived, you, we're all doing the same thing. People just like his band. So I shouldn't be upset. The only difference between he and, uh, him and me is that they like him, you know? <laughs> but we like and I, you. And I want to keep it that way. So, but so no, he was great. Um, one thing David Draymond said that I thought was the funniest thing ever and I, I like he has this in his back pocket ready to go at all times he had a dog on tour with him huge fluffy dog white dog it was beautiful and he'd walk around with it and uh, I think he almost waited until someone said something and this young lady came up she's like oh my gosh your dog is beautiful uh, and he just goes 
Yeah, she's down with the thickness. To a hundred percent, incredible, incredible. Oh. I loved Chris, it. Chris Holmes level lyrics there, dude. It was inc- I loved I it. To, it's disturbing. Oh, see, mm-hmm. thank you. That was good. Just I to be so it. so good. Oh, just to be so aware of of who you are and how you're perceived to drop that. I mean, maybe he was actually being serious, but I just think that got me so. I couldn't wait to tell everyone, like, oh my god, guys, did you hear what David Dramat said? But again, it's like I go, uh, not to be a disturbed um, defender or anything, but to go and watch them and to be a guy who's like, fucking, that's not rock and roll. I know what rock and roll is. And to see all these people, like every night, a shit ton of people saw, like connect with that. I was like, okay, that this is, this, it's something is going on here. It's not something that connects with me, but they're doing something for these people 